We took a little step away from the, the physics material to go into some math stuff, some general math stuff, which was vectors. So now let's take that back and apply it to what we were doing with physics before this, which was using kinematics equations. The kinematics equations are actually vector equations, and so I've rewritten one of the kinematics equations here. This is vector v, the final velocity vector, equals the initial velocity vector plus the acceleration vector times time, which is a scalar. Um, so what we're really doing here is a vector addition problem, um, v naught plus the product of these two. Now uh, keep in mind here when we multiply a vector quantity by a scalar quantity, that'll change the magnitude but not the direction of, uh, of this vector. So maybe we have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared downward and we multiply it by 2 seconds. That'll get us a vector of 9.8 times 2 is 19.6 meters per second squared times second, so it gets us meters per second, and the downward doesn't change. So 9.8 meters per second squared downward times 2 seconds would be 19.6 meters per second downward. And then we're adding that vector to whatever our initial velocity vector was. So let's try one of these, and then we'll look at um, a method where we can actually split these up and look at um, x-direction stuff and y-direction stuff separately, which is going to be convenient in a lot of these problems. So let's consider a kinematics problem. This one, we're going to have more than one dimension at work, which is something that uh, a little review of vectors or study of vectors is going to allow for. Uh, so we have a starting velocity that's to the right, but an acceleration that's downward. So there's our two dimensions. We've got left, right, and we've got up, down in here. Uh, we want to do a problem to figure out what the velocity of this thing is going to be, we'll say one second. After, uh, after this initial moment, and we have an acceleration given so we know how the velocity is going to change and in which uh, direction it's going to change. But let's see how this works out in, uh, in the vector addition stuff. Uh, so when I write this out uh, for, for the kinematics equation with vectors, you'll see that I have three vectors in there, and then time is our one scalar. So my next line, I'm going to fill in what I can here. I have final velocity is what I'm looking for. Uh, 20 meters per second is initial velocity, and I'm going to put that that's to the right. Kind of odd to see this written in, in the equation, but it'll be useful to keep track of that. Uh, plus our acceleration is 10 meters per second squared down. And I'm going to run out of room here. Our time is 1.0 seconds. Okay, so then we're going to uh, do our next line here. I'll go ahead and take care of that scalar times uh, uh, the, the 1 second times the 10 meters per second. So the 20 meters per second, that's not going to change at all. 20 meters per second to the right. And then plus, and 10 meters per second squared downward times one second, that's just going to be 10 meters per second down, downward. Uh, and now we have two vectors that we need to add together. So I can see that my, uh, my vector addition is going to look something like this, where this is 10 meters per second, and then my final velocity is going to, ooh, that isn't even close to straight. Let's try that again. There we go. This will be my final velocity here. So uh, a couple of steps to finish up here. We'll do Pythagorean theorem to figure out the magnitude of that final velocity. And that'll get us a velocity with magnitude of 22.4 meters per second. And then we'll use uh, trig to figure out the direction of this thing. We want to name the direction that that velocity arrow is pointing in. Um, and so I see that I know all three sides now. I use the 20 and the 10 just because there's one less calculation that went into finding those. So if I made a mistake in that last step, it doesn't show up in my, my next step here. So then I, the 20 and the 10 are going to be the opposite and the adjacent sides.
from that, uh, that angle theta. So I'll say then that theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. And the meters per second on top and on bottom will cancel, so I'll just write that out that way. So 10 over 20. And that'll give us an angle of 26.6 degrees. So then our final velocity is going to be 22.4 meters per second at 26.6 degrees below horizontal. Below horizontal to the right, we'll say. Okay. Now, in doing this, you might notice that um, we, we really haven't changed the, the horizontal piece of this. Um, so having that acceleration on, uh, on this one, having that up and down, does not change the left-right component of our overall vector. Our final velocity still has a, a horizontal component of 20 meters per second. It's just changed its vertical component. It was zero for the v-naught state, but now we have a 10 meter per second downward component to that final velocity. And so when we solve these projectile problems or, or two-dimensional motion problems, we're actually going to separate these things into what happens in the x direction and what happens in the y direction. And we'll actually keep track of those things separately from one another and do calculations separate for x and y. Keep all that information separate all through these, uh, these calculations and then only combine when we need to. So we don't end up having to do uh, the, the full vector addition process very often in these. Oftentimes we will have to, uh, say, resolve a vector into its components to begin a problem, but typically a whole vector addition problem won't be necessary on these. So we'll look into that, that other method um, in the next video in this playlist.